Hey students, today we are going to discuss about the components of communication. The term communication is derived from the Latin word communicat, which refers to sharing, contributing, informing, popularizing, and spreading. Communication can be expressed as a process in which individuals share their views, suggestions, evidence, thought, and feelings. The individuals involved in this process are known as sender and the receiver. The word communication is derived from the Latin word communes, which means something in common. Communication is nothing but the messages are transferred from the source to the receiver. It is the process of sending and receiving messages through verbal or non-verbal means, including speech or oral communication, writing, graphical representation, and sign signals and behavior. Next, we are going to see the definition of communication. According to Peter Little, communication is the process by which the information is transmitted between individuals and or organizations so that an understanding response results. Next topic is components of communication. There are five components in communication. The first one is sender, message, channel, receiver, and feedback. First, in sender, sender is also known as the encoder or the person who sends the message. The creator or idea or the message is known as sender or send source or encoder. A sender could be an individual or a group or an individual who might be acting on behalf of a group. The sender acts as the transmitter of the message. It includes communication skills, attitudes, experience, culture, self consciousness construct etc and the second one is message message refers to the stimulus that the sender transfers to the receiver messages are made up of symbols which ha which have certain and specific meaning to both the parties the sender and the receiver channels channels is also known as medium channels play an important role as the means of transmitting the message Mostly, the channels are in written or oral form, but as technology is developing rapidly, visual channels are becoming more popular and common. The telephone and the other various written forms such as letters, memos and reports fall under the common channel of communication. On this basis of nature of communication, the effectiveness and communication can vary. The fourth one is Receiver. Receiver is also known as decoder or listener. It includes the communication skills of the receiver, attitudes, experience, culture, and self conspect The person who receives the message understands it and interprets its meaning is known as receiver. The next element that comes after selecting the right communication channel is decoding the message. Decoding has been done by the receiver. The last one is feedback. Feedback is given by the receiver to the sender. The most significant element of communication is feedback. If there is a feedback only then a communication could be effective. In the absence of feedback, the sender cannot verify that the receiver has understood his message correctly. Feedback is very important to make communication successful. It is a reaction, reply, or the effect of information conveyed to the receiver. The target recipient of message is known as receiver. He receives the encoded message and tries to decode it by understanding, interpreting, and perceiving the mean of it as the sender has transmitted. Next, we are going to see the process of communication. The process of communication starts with the source or sender and finally ends with the feedback. The first step is source or sender. The individual group or an organization that starts the process of communication is known as sender or encoder. The whole responsibility of communication rests upon the shoulders of the sender. The perception and culture, if the message is transmitted from Framed according to the receiver's expectation, the acceptance and the approval level could be higher. The source absorbs the idea, frames the message, chooses the channel or medium. 
and lastly decides regarding the receiver the next second step is message the encoded idea that is transferred by the sender is called as message it is something that a sender wants to communicate or transfer to the specific receivers messages can be in two forms the verbal or non verbal verbal includes written or spoken non verbal includes appearance body language silence sound and actions the third step is encoding it is a method by which the idea or a thought of message is converted into symbols that can be transmitted in the process of encoding one should consider the contents that have to be included in the message and should also consider that how the receiver interpret it and how it can be affect the relationship among two parties the fourth one is the channel the medium by which the messages moves from the sender to the receiver is known as channel the channel can be a mass media which includes newspaper radio tv etc or it could be of individual use which includes telephone correspondence etc importance of message number of viewers number of receivers availability of the channel cost and effectiveness of the channel etc the fifth stage is a receiver the target recipient of a message is known as the receiver decode sixth one is decoding decoding is the stage where the receiver decodes the encoded message he interprets and comes out with the meaning of the message it interprets with the symbol of message the receiver applies his knowledge and experience or in some cases he may consult with the third party authorities such as a dictionary or a code book the receiver is not so much active in the process of communication but in the stage he becomes more active the seventh step is feedback at the end the receiver responds the communication that has been transmitted by the sender the interpretation can be done clearly or it could be based on misunderstanding of the message that has been sent the reaction or response of a receiver to sender is known as feedback the eighth one is noise noise is that interpretation in communication process which hinders communication process it is a negative component in communication channel in general noise can be introduced at any stage in process of communication hope you have understand the components and the process of communication let's see an example for the process of communication as we are going through online mode the sender the teacher who sends the messages through a channel called google meet or zoom to the receiver the students and the feedback is collected from the students hope you have understand the next topic is types of communication there are two types in communication the first one is verbal and the second one one is non verbal communication as the human brain developed over a period of time it become sensitive towards various sounds and events happening around it which in turn gave a rise to different forms of communication in many historical records it is found that different forms of communication such as pictorial oral and written communication were evolved progressively over a period of time the two main types of communications are verbal and non verbal verbal communication is further divided into two types oral and written verbal communication is nothing but the communication in which some type of language is used the most powerful tool of communication is language because the messages and ideas can be conveyed very easily with the help of it provided that all the parties are familiar with languages which is being used therefore any type of communication which involves the use of various written or spoken words is referred to as verbal communication words represent the most powerful and precise combination of symbols this is the reason why words are used in all types of formal communication the characteristics of verbal communications are specialization and productivity displacement weakly diminishing 
cultural transmission etc types of verbal communication the first one is oral communication the exchange of verbal information between the sender and the receiver is known as oral communication or verbal communication this type of communication is more genuine and faster than the written communication but it is considered to be as an formal according to one survey 70% of the total time spent by an executive in in communication acts activities 45% of that time is devoted to listening activities 30% of it is spent on speaking while reading and writing takes only 16 and 9% respectively an interaction that uses only the spoken words is referred to as the oral communication the next one is advantages of oral communication the main advantage is instant feedback the feedback is received instantly oral communication helps in getting quick feedback and explanation from the concerned people while listening to the speaker the audience can interact with him raise their queries make statements and suggestion additions to information provided by him the second one is better relationship due to oral communication the sender and the receiver can maintain a healthy relationship and atmosphere in an organizational setup oral communication fosters an informal relationship between the superiors and their subordinates by engaging them in one to one oral conversation the second one is time saving as compared to written communication oral communication consumes less time fourth one is effective tool for influencing oral communication plays a very important role in influencing the listener by giving them a sense of participation or involvement in the business no conflict between two parties can be sorted out until there is an direct inf- interference by the top officials in the matter and a direct talk takes place with the concerned people the second type is written communication the communication that takes place with the help of written symbols either handwritten or printed is known as written communication the elements that facilitate written communications are memos letters bulletins circulars instructions booklets reports manuals magazines handbooks etc written form of communication is the most popular among all the other types of business communications owners as well as managers of small business need to become efficient in written communication and also motivate their employees to do the same communication methods have immensely been altered by the information age which in turn put a lot of emphasis on the written forms of communication as compared to the oral forms of communication advantages of written communication are content cannot be distorted the, it is nothing but the contents in the written message is not able to modify hence it cannot be distorted economical written communication is a very cheap form of communication it is more feasible when both the parties of communication are not in the same location precise and clear messages that are to be communicated in written form are drafted more carefully than the oral ones the fourth one is record record can be maintained in written communication it might also act as an extension to orally communicated message and also assist in maintaining records a reliable reliable record can be maintained through written communication which can be used for future reference as well as in legal matters the disadvantages of written communications are expensive formal difficult in amendment causes misunderstanding and feedback the next one is non verbal communication another special way of communication in which no words and sentences are used is termed as non verbal communication it is also known as by some other names such as indirect method of communication by implication or wordless communication the sender can convey the message by using facial gestures and doing movements of limbs and body in a certain way a communication that takes place without using any word or language can be termed as non verbal communication 
Most of the communication that takes place among the human beings is non-verbal communication. It may seem to be strange, but according to a survey, 70% of the human communication takes place through non-verbal methods. Example, traffic signals. In traffic signal, the red light indicates us to stop immediately and while the yellow light indicates to get set and the green light indicates the meaning of move. Similarly, different symbols are used in traffic control and for warning people in certain conditions such as blind turn, school again, hospital, etc. In the same way, arrows in different actions such as upward arrow, downward arrow, right arrow and left arrow which indicates the movement in respective directions. There are various elements that facilitates the verbal communication such as eye contact, volume of voice, touch, gesture, facial expressions, dress, smell or fragrance in the act, etc. The non-verbal communication is basically divided into two categories. The first one is messages which are produced by the body and the second one is messages which are produced by broad setting. Broad setting is nothing but the time, space and the silence which involved in communication. Characteristics of non-verbal communications are it is primarily communicates emotion and attitude. It substitutes, contrasts, emphasizes or regulates verbal messages. Non-verbal cues are often ambitious. Non-verbal cues are continuous. It is viewed as more reliable. Non-verbal communication is strongly related to verbal communication. There are different methods in non-verbal communication. They are signs and symbols. In some situations, signs and symbols create a lasting impact. All forms of quotes that include visual signs, signals, which are used in place of words, numbers, and signs or punctuations comes under sign language. For example, eat, hungry, food, and restaurant, patting the stomach, showing motions to open mouth. The next example is do not know, struggling shoulders, rising hands, and eyebrows. The next one is little, holding the thumb and forefinger close together. Next example is time, tapping the wrist. The second method is body language. Body languages can be defined as an analysis of body movement. It is a method of conveying the message without using verbal communication. This is done by using movements of different parts of the body. Almost all types of human emotions such as happiness, shock, surprise, regret, fear, sadness, etc. can be conveyed through a body language. Okay students, hope you have understand the communication processes and types of communication. Let's start in the next class. Thank you.